Hello, it's Jimmy here. The Riley's just arrived here. A Land Rover Discovery Sport for me to look at. Uh, it's got DPF issues and he's been to four different garages plus the RAC and he hasn't had a resolution so obviously they've been clearing the fault code but it comes back on after you drive it a short while um, and then the last garage he went to it came out of the garage with the engine light still on and they said they couldn't help him so let's have a look okay so we're just going to connect up the diagnostic machine I'm going to use this one it's not one I've used yet the Ancel okay now we're going to start the engine up so we have an exhaust filter full message done 117,999 miles so we're just just under 118 engine management lights on okay so this is a brand new tool I've not used this brand before so we're gonna have a go at using it I'm a bit excited to use it really it's something different I've not used it before so um, yeah interesting I'm gonna try and hit the auto detect see if that will find it if not we can do a search on this search bar up there but it should find it I would imagine Land Rover Discovery Sport 2017. Okay. System selection. We're going to go to the engine ECU. And where we're in, we're going to look for the trouble codes. Glow plug, control module, diesel particulate filter restriction, cylinder floor 4 glow plug. Cylinder 1 glow plug, cylinder 2 glow plug, and cylinder 3. That's weird. Intermittent. So we may have a problem with the glow plug control module as well. Hmm. Okay, so my immediate question is, have these glow plugs already been changed or not? And has the module even been changed or what have they done? I'm not sure. Or has this just been unplugged? Because customer has also given me this from one of the garages I've just folded over I don't want to be naming people who's doing but um, we've got cylinder 4 glow plug on here that's the only one and vehicle conditions incorrect okay so this is another garage so it looks like they've done a regeneration uh, a DPF clean free I'm not sure what that's about. So maybe they obviously they couldn't resolve it, so they didn't charge for the DPF clean or something. But obviously it's got glow plug issues, so DPF regeneration isn't going to work. So of course my question now straight away is obviously this has been to a couple of garages and and their diagnostic report shows uh, glow plug number four, I think it was. But now on my scan tool it's saying one, two, three, and four, and the glow plug module. So what's going on there why have we got more fault codes why has it come out with more fault codes than it's went in with um, have they been unplugging stuff possibly I've not seen the control module glow plug control module fail on one of these yet but you never know okay so we've I, I know what fault codes we've got um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset the fault codes take the vehicle on our test drive and we'll see what fault codes come back um, my suspicion is it's got a glow plug number four faulty it's went in somewhere and i don't know they've been unplugging stuff trying to test stuff maybe and that's why we've got fault codes for all of the other stuff so i mean i've, I've got printouts here and uh customers show me other reports from other mechanics on his phone which all say glow plug cylinder four like i said um i, I just don't understand why they you know, for a few years now, I've been sharing these videos to sort of raise awareness. Sorry, this you know, people have been doing this for for many years, and the whole reason I made my videos was because I was seeing people do this, go through this exact same issue. Customers are also have have been going through this, you know, aggravation of four, five, six, seven, eight trips to mechanics, and they still haven't had their DPF issue resolved. Not also for the customers, but also for mechanics. Most of the people who are watching my videos are going to be mechanics themselves who want to learn. A little bit about stuff that they don't know there's a lot of mechanics that know a lot more stuff than i know trust me but when it comes to dpfs i've just spent my time looking at, at why these things happen and what i don't understand is by now why this has been to i don't know if he said three or four i think it was four get four different garages and the rec nobody has told him 
that he needs to change his glove lug so he can fix his DPF fault. You need to fix your glow plug and then your DPF will be okay as long as you haven't got other issues. If you've got a glow plug error out on most cars, I'd say 99%, um, your DPF regeneration won't happen. So you can clear your fault or you can clean your DPF. You'll get maybe, you could get anything from, from 20 miles to 300 miles maximum and your light will come back on. So maybe a few days, maybe a day, but maximum I'd say a week, and you'll have your error come back. So what we're gonna do now, I'll, say, I'll take it for a test drive. So I can see this is like full acceleration. The vehicle is in restricted performance. Okay, so we've done around about a mile or two. These are the two fault calls that have come back. So exactly like I su suspected. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just remove the glow plugs. They're quite hidden, they're underneath the inlet manifold there so we're just going to try and get my hand down there and get them out so we're just in the process of getting these out okay so there's many tests you can do to try and test glow plugs but the most simplest one i try and do first is just a continuity test so if we bridge that over we haven't got anything we bridge this one so we have number one number two Number three, sorry, just get that steady. Number three, number four, number four is dead. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the replacement glow plugs to come, we're gonna do the quick finger of death test. Let's have a little look inside. She looks sparkling clean. Well, sorry, I just need a minute to catch my breath. 117,000 miles, 18,000 miles, and it hasn't had a DPF replaced. Some Discovery Sports, maybe they are, so maybe some are, are reliable. Okay, new club lugs arrived, and we have fitted them down there. It is quite hard to reach. The way I'm doing this is sort of getting my arm sort of all the way down, and you can just about feel where they are. So you, can, you can't see them, but you can feel them. It does sort of dig into your arm a bit as you're doing it but you can get it done okay now I'm gonna attempt to clear that glow plug fault again so that one has gone and now we have just a diesel particulate filter okay now that we've resolved the glow plug we're gonna look at this exhaust filter full so everything about this tool so far has impressed me the battery looks good the usability of it is really good one thing I've noticed so far, which I had a problem with on one of my the sync tool that I tried before, is it doesn't have a search bar so you can quickly go through the live data. There is literally hundreds of different items here that you can go through and trying to find the one you're looking for can take a while unless you have a search bar where you can just search what you're looking for and then tick them off. Well, I have been through all of the list and I can't even find the DPF on here. I don't know if, I don't know if I'm not using it right, but it looks like I may have to switch tools. See, I've been going through these lists and I cannot see the DPF. We've got all of the other live data. We've got DPF stuff obviously in the in the fault codes and we I think we have the options for the special functions for it, but I just can't find the live data on this tool. See we have these options but we just can't find the live data um, page that we're looking for so I don't know what's going on there. Okay I'm gonna have to get out the Euro tab 3 from launch. Okay, we have the Euro tab 3 set up. We're just going to look in the data stream. And you see here we've got a search option here. So we're going to look for differential pressure and soot. Okay, so we have 40 millibars of pressure at idle. Um, Obviously this has been reset by the garage, so you, I wouldn't take notice of this measured soot mass. It's been reset. Um, that would have been up around sort of, with that pressure I'd imagine that would have been up around sort of 50 to 60 grams. So the DPF is quite blocked, so we're gonna need to get that sorted out. Now we've got the engine speed there as well. We're gonna hold the revs up to around about 3000 RPM and see what, what pressure it goes up to. 250.
Okay, now I'm under the car. What I'm going to do is remove this support brace and I'm going to remove the AdBlue injector up there. It's usually on a 4mm hex socket. So there is the AdBlue port. It's hard to get the camera around there, but you can see where that is blocked up. So yeah, I can't get the front facing of the camera, but that's basically there what I'm looking at. You can see the lump sticking out. It's blocked off. She's in a pick. We'll scrape all that away. And we'll use some liquid to flush away the final bits. Okay, now we're finished cleaning out the and blue crystallization we're just going to connect up the dpf cleaning gun okay so that is the gun it's connected up to the vehicle got that connected to the compressor with the launch dpf cleaning fluid in there just going to squeeze the trigger we'll get that filled up okay back inside we're going to start up the car just going to hold the revs up around 3000 rpm just going to keep an eye on the level now of course it started off at 250 like we showed at the start of the video now I would be expecting this to come down below 50 millibars so we are coming down there down now to sort of 90 to 80 millibars let it idle down, we have 10. Okay, now it would be safe for me to go to the vehicle special functions and reset the DPF. Oh, what did I do there? Communications lost, we have to switch the ignition on. Okay, so we're nearly done. And that's done successfully. And we've just confirmed that we've got no fault codes in the ECU now go back to the data stream and again we get the engine speed and uh, DPF pressure up and we have 40 to 50 millibars exactly where I said I wanted it to be and if we let that idle down we should have a zero reading well we've got 10 oh there we go it's gone below 10 now so we have zero anything below 10 it will read a zero reading so as long as it's below 10 it's fine on these so a little bit of a test drive, obviously we're just in a car park here, we're taking it for a couple of miles down the road. And you can see there we're going to be having some smoke from the exhaust for a few minutes, so we're just going to hold the revs until that clears away. Okay, so now most of this steam has gone away, we're going to just take it on another couple of miles test drive, just to make sure everything's fine, and then we can hand it back over to the customer. Okay, so we've taken it for another couple of miles drive, and everything's fine. Obviously we've been keeping an eye on the live data. One more thing I will add here is that nobody's cleaned this DPF before. Um, the reason I know that is because the AdBlue injector has never been off before. I can tell by the amount of rust that was on it. And the DPF pressure sensor has never been removed. So when most of these guys are saying they're cleaning their DPF, they're just parking it up, pressing re regeneration and uh, hoping it works, but it doesn't. <coughs> the reason the regen wasn't successful, like I said on this from the other garages, is the glow plug was out and just someone coming in with a block DPF and just pressing regen and sending them underway is just like going to a tyre shop and saying I've got a flat tyre and they, they say okay let's put some more air in it and see you later. You're gonna, your wheel's gonna go flat again maybe a few miles down the road. So that's all they're doing when you do a, a, a forced regeneration. So you need to find the fix, find the cause of the problem, fix that. Then your DPF will basically almost fix itself. So that's it. That's my message on that. So that's it. Land Rover Discovery Sports is all finished and I'll see you on our next video.